We're at Lesson 1.4b, Applying Properties to Solve Problems. We can use properties of addition to solve problems involving integers. What they mean by properties of addition are like the commutative property of addition or the associative property of addition. Those are properties of addition. And the commutative property of addition states that two or more numbers can be added in any order without changing the sum. So we can add 2 plus 1 plus 5, and that's going to equal 8. Or we can add 5 plus 1 plus 2, and that'll equal 8. The order doesn't matter for addition. The associative property of addition, that's the grouping property. So try to remember that that is the grouping property. It states that for all real numbers, a, b, and c, the sum is always the same regardless of their grouping. We can group b and c together and add it, and we will get the same sum as if we grouped a and b together and then added c. When we write a check, it's a debit or a negative number in a checking account representing money spent. When we deposit into a checking account, it's a credit or a positive number that increases our balance. Here we have a check, and you can see right here, it's asking to whom you pay, and it's Ace Pet Store. We have the date here. It looks like it's February 10th of 2021, and we have the amount that the check was written for, $83.48. So here the numbers are written as $83.48. And then on this line below who the check is written out to, you have to write it in word form 83 and as a fraction 48 over 100, 48 hundredths for the cents. And then she signed it. So here we're showing her balance was $478.39. Then she wrote that check to the pet store. So she subtracted that from her balance, and now she has $394.91 left. For every check she wrote, we need to subtract that amount from her balance. Then she deposited $325. Her balance went back up again. Then she bought some groceries, and her balance went down. When she wrote a check, her balance decreased. When she deposited money, her balance increased. Sarah has a checking account. On Friday, she writes a check for $130 for groceries. Then she deposits $95. Finally, she writes another check for $50. What was the total change in the amount in Sarah's account? So the first thing we do is analyze the information. We know she writes a check for $130. For groceries is not important. What's important is that she wrote a check for $130. Then she deposits $95. That's important. Finally, she writes another check for $50. The deposits will add to the account. Writing a check will deduct money from the account. So we formulate a plan. We're going to use a positive integer for deposits and use a negative integer for each check written. And we'll write this as a check plus a deposit plus a check. Now we can use properties of addition to simplify the calculations and find the total change in the account. We'll be able to find how much the account changed from what she did. She wrote a check for $130, she made a deposit of $95, then she wrote a check for $50. So our expression is negative 130 plus 95 plus negative 50. We can change the order of the add-ins with the commutative property of addition. We can swap the place of the 95 and the negative 50 add-ins. See the 95 was in the middle and now it's at the end. And we group the negative add-ins with the associative property of addition to add them first. They have like signs. We have a negative 130 plus a negative 50. Negative 130 and negative 50 is negative 180. Now we can add the $95 and we find the difference between their absolute values. 
we have a 180 and 95. That's a difference of 85. And we use the sign of the greater absolute value, and that would be this 180. So our answer, our sum, is going to be negative 85. We found the difference, but then we took the sign of the greater absolute value at end. Okay? Negative 85 means that Sarah has $85 less than she did before Friday. We know the change in her account was it went down by $85. It decreased by $85. And this is reasonable because she wrote checks totaling $180 but only deposited $95. Our expression to solve Sarah's account problem was negative 130 plus 95 plus negative 50. Now, we also could have written this as 95 minus 130 minus 50 by writing the deposit first, then writing the checks as positives, but then subtracting. See, instead of using addition and all of them being add-ins, we could have written these as a positive 130 being subtracted and a positive 50 being subtracted. We also could have written it as the check for negative $130 plus the deposit of $95 minus a check for $50. We would still get negative 85. We would still get that her account decreased by $85. We can rewrite them like this because to subtract an integer, we add its opposite. So if we did see this, 95 minus the 50, it's the same thing as adding a negative 50. See, adding the opposite this is a positive 50. We're subtracting a positive 50, so the opposite would be adding a negative 50. That's why they can be written either way. We can use a two-column list to solve this problem. One column lists the debits, the other column lists the deposits or credits, and we total each column separately, then add their totals. So for the debits, we have a negative 130 plus a negative 50. That equals negative 180. There's only one credit for $95, so that's the credits, that's the deposits. Now we add the negative 180 plus the 95 credit, we find the difference between their absolute values, which is 85, and we take the sign of the greater absolute value, which is the negative 180. That means our sum is going to be negative 85. So here's something that might help you with problems like this. These steps may help us add or subtract three or more integers. We write subtraction as addition of the opposite. So if we have a negative 3 plus 8 minus a negative 3 plus 5 plus 4 minus 5, well, that's a lot of integers, isn't it? Well, here we have a minus negative 3. This can be rewritten as addition of the opposite. So this minus sign becomes a plus sign, and the opposite of negative 3 is positive 3. We get rid of this, and we have a plus 3 here. We can also cross out all opposites that cancel each other out. Remember, they make zero pairs. So we have some negative and positive signs here. We have a negative 3, and we know we're adding a positive 3. These make a zero pair and cancel each other out. Here, we're adding a positive 5, and we're taking away a positive 5. That makes a zero pair. They cancel each other out. All we're left with is a positive 8 plus a positive 4. Well, that's positive 12. We eliminated zero pairs out of the equation. Now, if this is still too confusing for you, just use the order of operations and start from left to right, adding and subtracting whichever comes first. You can always do that, okay? Let's try one last example. 
Jim wrote a check for $20. Then he deposited $30. Finally, he wrote a check for $15. What was the total change in the amount of Jim's account? So we know he wrote a check for $20. That's important. He deposited $30. That's important. And then he wrote a check for $15. That's important. So we have a check of $20. So that's minus 20. Then he deposited 30. So that's a plus 30. Then he wrote a check for $15. So we're going to add a negative 15. We can use the commutative property of addition and swap the negative 15 and the positive 30. See, the 30 was in the middle, now it's at the end. Then we can use the associative property to add the like signs. Negative 20 plus negative 15 is negative 35. He deposited $30, and the difference is $5 between their absolute values. Negative 35 has a greater absolute value, so we're going to take the sign of the greater absolute value and we have a negative 5. That means Jim's account, the total change in the amount of his account, is it decreased by $5. We're finished with 1.4b. We're going to move on to the last part of the lesson, 1.4c. And we're going to be comparing values of expressions. So remember, the commutative property of addition lets us swap the add-ins places. We can change their order. And the associative property of addition is the grouping property. We can group them differently and we'll get the same sum. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you for the last part of the lesson. Bye.